Just stand if you can. Turn around and say hi to somebody. Greet them by name, like the Bible says, if you know their name.
scripture for that too. There it is. Naaman 1 7. The Lord is good and a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. on your goodness and your mercy and your forgiveness, your long suffering towards us. We ask that you would break through the things in our heart that hold us from going deeper to you and to be better witnesses for you. Uh, that's the desire of our heart. We praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to worship, those of you joining us here in the sanctuary, and those of you joining us on the screen, we're just uh, delighted that you're with us here today. Um, we continue uh, now our uh, work through the book, Growing in Christ. Uh, we're still on chapter one. Uh, today is uh, uh, chapter one, the assurance of forgiveness, 
This is part two. I'm, I'm preaching for the second time uh, on this today. I'm going to share two scriptures with you here this morning, uh, short scriptures that uh, I think speak to this idea of God's assurance uh, for us. The first one is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning with the 17th verse. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. So we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And our second lesson today comes from uh, the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 27th verse. Jesus said, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, today... Um, the title of my message, as I mentioned earlier, is The Assurance of Salvation, Part 2. Uh, before we jump into my message, however, let's uh, work on the memory verse a little bit. This is the, the memory verse appointed for chapter 1. It's uh, 1 John 5, 11 to 12. Speak it with me. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. Sorry about that. I messed that up, didn't I? Jake, move me back, would you? I went too far. Yeah, and, and clear the... There you go. Thank you. All right, let's do this again. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I don't know if you've noticed when you're memorizing this, do you ever find that you forget to put in there the of God on that second phrase, whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. That trips me up all the time. So that's why you have to keep practicing over and over. You know, uh, Repetition is your friend when it comes to memorization. So keep working on it. you got another week to commit it to memory. It's so important to do this, to commit Scripture to memory. Um, you know, it's what, it's what feeds your soul. You know, it's what's there to protect you. It's one of the ways that God protects you um, from evil as you live your life. You know, these, these scriptures will bubble up, you know, when you need guidance, when, when you need, uh, you, you know, uh, some idea of what to do, these scriptures will bubble up in your mind and, and tell you um, how you ought to live. So hang in there. We, as I said, we are continuing our Growing in Christ initiative, and I want to point out to you again uh, our uh, slogan or mantra for this, um, uh, th this initiative, cultivating the confidence to live and share your faith. I think that's really important that you remember that that's, that's our goal as Christians, isn't it, is to live the faith and to share the faith. That's kind of our double calling, isn't it, um, as disciples of Christ. Okay, so hopefully... This initiative is going to uh, help you deepen your understanding of how to do that. Okay, so today um, you're going to find um, what happened there. <laughs> Technical difficulty. Going back to the uh, sermon, sermon in Scripture. What, what? Keep going. Okay. So when I need it, is it going to be there? That's the question. All right. So one constant message in the Bible is 
um, I mean, from front to back, and especially in the Gospels, is you are loved. Did you know that? Have you heard that from the Bible? Have you heard that as, uh, from the pulpit as, as the preacher um, proclaims the word of God to you? You are loved by God. Um, think of some of the scriptures. Uh, John 3.16, For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son. Um, think of Romans chapter 5, verse 8. God demonstrates His love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And who can forget the words of Jesus on the cross? Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Those are words of love. You know, from, a, from God to you, the people of God. God is a loving Father who loves His children with deep affection. A Father who sees His prodigal children far off and floundering, and He runs to them, falls on their necks, and gives them a power hug. You know, the question is, um, why are we so blessed to have such a God? So, what's going on here, Jake? <laughs> Did we have a technical failure? <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to carry on without my stuff. If you, if you finally get around to having it fixed, let me know. Okay, all right. So that's our focus question today. Our focus question is, why are we so blessed to have such a loving God? I've mentioned this several times, I think even in the last few months, um, that the human race is not an accident, okay? The human race um, just didn't happen from happenstance. I mean, it's just not, it's just not something that just, you know, could have occurred, uh, could have not occurred, but it happened to occur. That's not, that's not what happened. We, we were created for a purpose by a loving, caring God. And God created us for this purpose. God created us to be his companions. We see that, don't we, in, in Genesis 2, how you know, God lovingly forms the man, lovingly forms the woman, and then he lives with them in the garden, doesn't he? I mean, he comes down and he walks with them and he talks with them in the garden, is, is very, very loving and caring towards them. He's a very approachable God, isn't he? Enjoying friendship with his human creatures. So I want you to think about that. Have you ever thought of yourself as a friend of God? You know, sometimes we sing that song here uh, at this service. You know, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I think that's, a, that's a, an awesome uh, way of thinking about your relationship uh, with your creator. Um, but unfortunately... Uh, after God created humanity, sin entered into the world, and sin destroyed that divine human relationship, that divine human friendship or companionship that God had established with humanity. Sin, by enticing human beings to disobey their Creator, destroyed the trust and the intimacy that was necessary for this life-giving and life-affirming companionship that God desires to share with us. But here's the good news. The good news is that God at that point did not give up on us. In fact, what he did is he put into uh, play, he, 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 he put into uh, 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 motion um, a plan, a plan to rescue us, a plan to uh, uh, save us from our sins and to restore this relationship and friendship and companionship with us. Because you see, that companionship was too important for God to let go. He wasn't going to live without it. So the Bible tells us the plan, doesn't it? The plan was to send the Son, to send God's only begotten Son to earth, to fix the error, so to speak, to reboot the relationship that had gone awry. 
Um, and I want to share you, with you this uh, scripture here that's, that's up on the screen now. Um, we, we read it here in our, our first lesson. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. In other words, um, we have become new creations. Each of you is a new creation in Christ. Don't underestimate how important that is for your life. You are not the old person that you were. You are not the old person who was enslaved to sin. You are a new creation. Christ animates you now. As St. Paul said in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it's not I who live, but Christ who lives in me and gave himself up for me that I might have life. We Humpty Dumpties unlike the nursery rhyme, have been put back together again. And we thank God for that. It's, we've been put back together through Jesus and by his sacrifice on the cross. And through that, God restores to us that intimate companionship that he always intended for us. And so the open invitation is always there for you. God wants to share in your life. He wants you to come into his presence and share in his life. Now, I want to share another verse with you that I think is, is just super important. Um, this is uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. God made him who had no sin. And who was that? Jesus. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. So Jesus came to be a sin offering for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Do you see what's taking place here? There's this important transaction. Jesus is taking from us our sin, and then he's giving us something. And what he's giving us is his righteousness. He's giving us his sinlessness. And why is that important? Why, why did he do that? Well, it's because sin prevents us from being in the presence of God. Sin throws up a wall. I said that last week. Sin throws up a wall between us and God. Okay? God cannot bear the presence of sin. He can't bear to be in the presence of sin. Um, if, we, if we, in all of our sinfulness, um, unrepentant, walked into the presence of God, the glory of God would destroy us. Because, you know, they're, they're like that. They're like, you know, it's like annihilation. It's like atomic annihilation, right? That's... That's what happens. So, so what Jesus does is he makes it possible for you to stand in the presence of God by taking your sin upon himself and giving you his righteousness. So when God, the Father, looks at you, he doesn't see your sinfulness. You know what he sees? He sees Christ's righteousness. And because of that, then we can live in the presence of God. That's why we clothe uh, people in white when we baptize them. It symbolizes them being uh, covered in the righteousness of Christ. And it's that righteousness of Christ that makes it possible for us to live in the presence of God and to relate to Him, to have a relationship with Him, to have friendship with Him, to be God's companion. You can't have friendship and companionship without presence. Right? Think about that. If you have a, a friend and they live a long ways away and you never get to see them and you never get to talk to them, it's not much of a friendship, is it? You don't get any benefits hardly at all from that friendship. But boy, if you can talk to that person on the phone or FaceTime with them, or even better, if you can come into their presence and, and, and see them face to face, well, then you got a friendship, don't you? I mean, that's when you really start to reap the benefits of friendship. And companionship. And so that's one of the reasons um, that God comes to assure us of our salvation so that we will avail ourselves of this friendship, so that we will, will go to Him, we'll run to Him, we'll, we'll live in His presence. He desires that of us, He wants that friendship, He wants that companionship. But of course, you know. We human beings, we are uh, an anxious lot. 
aren't we? I just, by and large, human beings are really anxious. It just seems to be one of the one of those ubiquitous um, emotions that we that we all feel. And if you if you read the the Gospels closely, you'll see there that Jesus um, spends a lot of time trying to convince us to not be so anxious. Uh, especially Luke chapter 12. He, he spends time there saying to us, uh, don't be anxious about your basic needs. Don't be anxious about what you will wear. Don't be anxious about the clothes that you will wear. Don't be anxious about the food that you will eat. Um, by extension, you know, don't be, don't be anxious about where you're going to live. Don't be anxious about your job. Um, those kinds of things. Um, Jesus says, God knows you need them. He's working for you and on that behalf. Uh, instead, seek first the kingdom. Fe- and what, what does he mean by that? He means seek first to live in the presence of God. And then he says something that's, that's hard, I think, sometimes for us to, to believe, but it's true, and that is that all these other things will be added to you as well as you need them. Worry is the devil's greatest tool. uh, The devil uses worry to divide us from our God. Because really, what is is worry? Worry is um, an emotion, a negative emotion that drives us to think that it's up to us, that I have to take care of all my needs. Well, if I'm doing that, what I'm really also doing is saying, I don't trust in God's providence to take care of me. I don't trust God's promise that he's going to take care of me. And nothing pains God more than for his children to to, to doubt his divine providence. And so Jesus moves to quell our doubts, doesn't he? We just just heard there from Luke chapter 12 what he says to us. You know, uh, don't worry. Instead, Seek the kingdom, okay? We heard it today in that, that second lesson, that lesson from John I read uh, to you, John 10, 27 and 28. My sheep listen to my voice, Jesus said. I know them and they follow me and no one will snatch them out of my hand. <coughs> in, this, in this set of verses here, Jesus uses that analogy between you know, the shepherd and the sheep. Okay, that relationship, and he says to us, that's the kind of relationship I want to have with you. I want to be your shepherd. And what's the the shepherd do? The shepherd protects the sheep. The shepherd leads the sheep by still waters to drink. The shepherd finds green pastures for the sheep to eat in. The shepherd uh, brings the sheep in at night into the sheep pen and then protects them all night from from wolves and thieves. Jesus is your good shepherd. He says, you just go about your business seeking the kingdom. You go about your business following me, being my disciple, and I will take care of the rest. I will protect your soul from harm. See what he says there? No one will snatch them out of my hand. Uh, Not even the devil. Not even the devil can snatch you out of your hand. If you're focused on Jesus, if you uh, are following Jesus, serving Jesus, worshiping Jesus with your life, nothing, no, no person can lead you astray. Not even the devil can lead you astray. Now, there is a caveat. And the caveat is... If you decide to turn away from Jesus and follow the evil one or to follow somebody else who has some kind of other uh, supposed truth that they're offering you, well, that can can damage your soul. That can damage your faith. that That can lead you into the weeds. But if you're doing what sheep do, and what do sheep do? They follow. That's all they do. They follow the shepherd. If you are following the shepherd, Jesus says, no one will snatch you out of my hand. 
So I want to encourage you to continue uh, to, to, to seek first the kingdom. Take Jesus at his word. In fact, at the bottom of your uh, sermon notes today, I've got a sermon challenge there, a faith challenge there for you. Um, take Jesus at his word. You are forgiven. You are saved. You are loved. You are protected by the good shepherd. And in light of this truth, strive to let go of your anxiety. Jesus wants to assure you each and every day that you are loved, that you are saved, that you belong to him, and no one can snatch you out of his hand. You know, I think sometimes we cling too tightly to that anxiety, don't we? It's like this dysfunctional comfort that we get from hanging on to our anxiety. What Jesus is saying is, man, open your fingers, open your hands, let it go and let God have it and take care of it. Just do your job as a sheep. Do your job following Jesus. Concentrate solely on worshiping Him and serving Him. And in the living of this life, you will find the assurance that you're looking for. And in, indeed, I think you'll find assurance beyond your imagination. This is a tough life we live. There are all kinds of things happening in our lives, impinging on us, bringing us pain, bringing us suffering, bringing us um, uh, uncertainty. Um, and, and in the end, there's only one thing that lasts, and that is Jesus. So cling to him. Hang on to him. Don't hang on to anxiety. Let go of the anxiety. Grab a hold of Jesus. I'll leave you with these words. Jesus said this to his disciples, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Boy, that sounds like us, doesn't it? Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and guess what? I will give you rest. Rest in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. As we prepare to go to God in prayer, I have a couple here I want to add, a couple prayer uh, additions. I want to add to Anthony Cardenas, and I want to add the family and friends of Irv Silly. Uh, this is, um, did I pronounce that right, Denise? Okay, uh, this is a friend of Denise, um, passed away, um, so we'll keep them in our prayers. Anyone else we should pray for today? Continue to pray for uh, the family and friends of uh, Sherry Sadowski, whose uh, funeral we celebrated or observed this week. Um, and the flowers are from, from her funeral uh, this week. Yes? Okay. What's going on there? Okay. All right. How's her neck? All right. Anyone else? All right. How about uh, birthdays, anniversaries, joys? Yes. Oh. Okay. Okay. So uh, Izzy Sears, how old? Fourteen today. Awesome. Tell her we said congratulations. Others. Yes. All right, so the Fox is going to celebrate 32 years, you say? All right, congratulations. Others? Yes, Christine. Okay, all right. We've got a fire siren going off, so we will pray for uh, whoever is in need, and we'll pray for the, the rescue team as well. Yes, in the back. Okay, so... Okay. Excellent. So Kelsey Kennedy, who's in the Air Force, correct, has been in the Middle East, and uh, she's home now for a visit. Okay. Okay, so she's come back to her base. Is she staying there until she goes to England in March? 
Okay. Are you going to get to go down and see her? <laughs> okay. All right. That'll be awesome. All right. So we'll just continue to pray for her. As she's changing uh, homes and changing places, we will pray for safety. All right. Anyone else? All right. Let's uh, bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, we are so grateful for the word we hear today, that word of assurance that, um, you, know, you, you know, we love because you first loved us. We are loved. We are loved by the Creator. You created us for a purpose. You, you created us so you could love us, so you could be our friend, so you could be our companion. Um, and that just, just warms our heart, Lord, uh, to, know that, to know that truth. Um, and so, Lord, we come and we confess, you know, there's times when we have um, failed to, to remember that, to remember that we are loved. And we've, we've turned you into a harsh judge instead of that loving Father that you are. And so uh, we pray you forgive our sins, forgive uh, those times when we've turned away from you when we've gone off to do our own thing, uh, Lord God. Um, and we so thank you for welcoming, welcoming us back um, when we come to our senses. I mean, you just don't welcome us back. You run to us and you throw your arms around us and kiss us and hug us and, and uh, say, welcome home. Um, what a joy that is, Lord God. Um, so thank you. Thank you for all your many blessings that you give us. Most of all, thank you for Jesus who makes it possible for us to repent of our sins and to be forgiven of our sins and to be made right with you so that we can live in your presence. Um, help us to realize that, Lord, that when we, when we pray, when we study your word, when we meditate on you, um, that you are surrounding us uh, with your with your Holy Spirit, which brings your very presence to us. Even in this life, even in this life in the flesh, we still are able to experience your presence. You're here right now. Help us to, to, to know that, Lord. Help us to, to recognize your presence among us. You pr promise wherever two or three or more gather in your name that you would be present among us. And so we, we take you at your word. Father God, we... we we pray that um, you would help us to let go of our anxiety. Um, help us, Lord, to have a deep faith that allows us to, to trust that you are uh, in our lives, to trust that, that you, Lord God, um, uh, are saving us through your son Jesus, to, to trust, Lord God, that that you are here for us, and that come what may in this life, nothing can separate us um, from this relationship that we have with you. Help us to open our hands and let go of that anxiety, let go of that worry, um, and to very calmly and in a steady way uh, walk with you, serving you, worshiping you, praising you uh, each and every minute of the day. Gets tough sometimes, Lord. So, sometimes the struggles in our life are are are, are pretty uh, pretty strong, um, pretty overwhelming. And yet, you promise to be with us at all times, in all situations. You will never leave us or forsake us. You say, "Help us to trust that. Help us not to worry about that. Help us not to worry about um, will our needs be met or not. Help us to just um, look to you." And know that, that you in your own good time will provide everything that we need. Um, especially in terms of our faith. Uh, because it is, it is that faith um, that connects us to you and brings us eternal salvation. It is, it's that faith that's eternal. Faith, hope, and love, Paul said. So help us to, help us to remember that. This world will pass away. But our relationship with you will never pass away. Help us to believe that and live uh, as if that is true. Hear our prayers, Lord, whatever they may be from the, the bottoms of our hearts. 
this day. Hear our prayers for those on our prayer list. Hear our prayers for those people we mentioned here this morning. Um, we pray for Anthony Cardenas, uh, has a kidney issue. We pray for Pastor Judy. We pray for Kelsey. Um, we're, we're glad she's home in the United States, and we, we hope and pray that, that her mother uh, and family get to visit with her, and we, we, we pray, Lord, that you'll give her safe travel uh, to her new home in England in March. We pray for whoever is um, in need of help this moment um, and called 911. Um, who, whoever they are, Lord, wherever they are, we pray that you be there with them, watch over them and protect them. We pray for our, our first responders, the firemen, the EMTs, Lord, that you would watch over them as well. Keep them safe as they rush to the aid of this person. Lord, we lift up and pray for our nation as it prepares to go to the, to the, to the voting booth, to the ballot box. Lord, may we make wise decisions um, as we cast our votes. We pray, Father, for our world. There are so many places in the world where turmoil and war and violence um, are, uh, and injustice are, are, are just uh, out of control. And so we pray, Father, that your healing spirit um, would be anointed upon the world and would bring uh, uh, you know, peace to those violent situations. Um, we pray especially for the people of Ukraine. We pray for the people of Russia um, that they can, can, can somehow, some way figure out how to end this carnage um, that's taking place there between their two nations. Um, give Give the leaders of the world, uh, Lord, the wisdom uh, and the, the f um, perseverance um, to work for peace and to figure out how to bring peace um, to, those, to those situations. So, Lord, we, we just thank you. We praise you that you are the God of peace and that you've given us this vision of peace. And, um, Lord, we're going to keep working for it. And we just pray you continue to... Um, share your spirit with us and, and lead us and guide us in that endeavor. And so, God, we, we turn to you, we praise you, we honor you, we thank you um, for this life, this eternal life that you've given us in your son. Um, so, Lord, we, 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 we thank and praise you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. All uh, right. We're going to come to the Lord's table here today. We'll do it by intinction at the front. So make sure you hang on to your wafer and dip it in the cup before you eat it. Um, if you are a guest or a visitor among us and you feel moved by the Holy Spirit to come forward and share in the Lord's Supper with us, by all means, come forward and do so. All right. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this. 
for the remembrance of me. Then our Lord took the cup. He gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of your sin. As often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. We pray the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Helpers, would you come forward, please? from our sins he is our hope our righteousness Jesus only Jesus who can make the blind to see who holds the key
Now may this, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in His grace now and always. Amen. Just a couple announcements. Uh, first of all, thanks to everyone who helped with uh, the funeral dinner, providing food or coming and actually uh, providing uh, uh, time, uh, labor uh, to put on the funeral dinner. The family was very thankful uh, for your efforts, and we appreciate that. Um, as you go out today, uh, you'll find some tables uh, out in the uh, gathering room. Uh, as you know, coming up uh, in about three weeks is our uh, annual holiday bazaar, and um, that takes a lot of effort from a lot of people to pull off. It's a, it's a big event, um, and uh, we raise a lot of money for charities and ministries. It's a big fundraiser here at St. Michael. Um, and so on that table, you're going to find... Uh, lots of opportunities uh, for you to consider uh, to, to help with the bazaar. Uh, you can volunteer your time. You can volunteer uh, bringing things uh, th that they need, food and, and other items. So uh, please check that out on your way out this morning. Um, and if you uh, volunteered to take a sign and put a sign out, either in your yard or someplace else in the community, the signs are, are uh, in the, uh, the code area, uh, are they mainly in the code area, Sharon, or are they other places too? Towards the back? <laughs> the what? The cabinet. Oh, the display case. They're down that way. Okay. All right. That makes sense now. <laughs> um so um, if you took, if you volunteer to take a sign, make sure you take your sign. Okay, I think that's it. Any other uh, announcements I need to make? All right, I'm going to turn it back over to the worship team. Thanks for, what's that? Offering. Oh, well, yeah, I was going to turn it over to the worship team <laughs> while we take up the offering. Okay, sounds good. Come on. You don't have to wait for me to call you up. <laughs> no, you don't. Worship and worship music is a place, like they say, where heaven and earth meet. Uh, this song is Touching Heaven, Changing Earth. Won't you stand if you can? And we'll sing this together.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.